to the victors. Michigan victorious in the national championship, 34 to 13. Missed opportunities and a suffocating defense is the difference as Jim Harbaugh perhaps goes out a winner, delivering Michigan's first national championship since 1997. Back here with two-time Super Bowl champ Brian McFadden. Welcome in CBS Sports HQ college football analyst Barrett Salee. BMAC, Michigan, and defense yeah. still wins championships. Your reaction is what? Wow. <laughs> Wow, you talk about a team that was well coached, a team that was ex extremely physical for four quarters, a team that slowed down, neutralized one of the more elite passing attacks in college football led by an outstanding prototypical quarterback. I mean, Michigan hats off. When you talk about a team that got off to a fast start and kind of weathered the storm when Washington started to punch back Bar Barrett, I mean, just the physical nature was the answer for Michigan and that's what we saw in the second half and that's that's been their style of play since coach Harbaugh uh, got there became the head coach I mean you talk about time, a team that does they don't mind doing it the dirty way the hard way and that's what we saw for four quarters tonight and because of that the national champions yeah Washington came in with the Joe Moore award-winning offensive line and Michigan made them look like the Bob Moore award-winning finishing offensive line I don't even know who Bob Moore is but Michigan <laughs> owned that line of scrimmage consistently that offensive line for Washington was flat out embarrassed and look we talked about before the game how great Michael Penix is under pressure sliding up in the pocket climbing the pocket eluding that pressure and still delivering deep downfield on a dime he didn't do that because there were five dudes in his face almost every single down so credit to Michigan even when they didn't blitz it looked like the offensive line for Washington thought they were blitzing they did a great job disguising things and uh, man it was it was total domination by Michigan yeah it was close in the second half at times but I mean I with with a with a team like that with a defense like that you know B Mac you were right defense does win championships yeah and talk about a missed opportunity 11 minutes to go there's yep. a holding penalty on an offensive lineman that negates a 32 yard pass play to Rome Odunze mm. they just could not connect yeah all night long but that play proved to be so critical as Michigan goes down and eventually scores after an interception but I mean that play right there was sort of what represented this game the missed opportunities for Washington yeah the, the Washington they needed a spark and let me uh, first thing I want to say be clear that was the right call. It was holding. I understand people may say, well, it was a little bit, you know, ticky tag. Uh, they didn't have to call, call it. Yes, it was holding. And that's just the way the game flowed for Washington. They couldn't get out of their own way. You talk about office alignment, you know, false starts, things like that. That was just an, uh, a sloppy game from Washington, especially when you look at the quarterback in Michael Penix. And you're right, Hakeem, if they could have found a way to complete that pass and kind of jumpstart, you know, a second half effort, who knows how the ending of the game would have looked, you know what I mean? But that was the, the telling sign. If I'm not mistaken, guys, I think it was, what, 10 to 17 or 17, 13 at that point when it happened in the third quarter? 20 to 13. 20 to 13. So one so score you, game. You, you, one score game. You're down by seven. You get an opportunity to get that going, a 30-plus yard reception. And, of course, you right outside of the red area. Who knows? But that was the right call. Referees did, did exactly what they were supposed to do in Michigan. And you got to look at Barrett talked about their front. The guys rushing the passer, they did a great job in keeping the office alignment on their heels because we saw a lot of penalties, something that we did not see consistently from Washington, especially the office line play in tonight's matchup. Yeah, the holding call was, was killer. I'll go back to the third quarter, though. Late in the third quarter, third and eight from the Michigan nine-yard line. Washington has all the momentum. J.J. McCarthy runs up the middle for 22 yards. Now, that didn't lead to any points, but it flipped the field. Washington took over after the punt on the 11 yard line and that all the momentum was on Washington's side at that point and and that sort of deflated I think the entire building deflated the Washington sideline a little bit yeah they stayed in the game and certainly had a chance up until the midway point of that fourth quarter but that game could have been much much different had that 22 yard scramble from JJ McCarthy not happened so I think those are the two turning points that scramble by McCarthy and then that pass to Odunze which was negated by the holding penalty those two things don't happen it's a much different ball game well they they force the punt right Washington does mm -hmm. and, and then they've 
got a third and four situation, and Will Nixon drops the football for a yep. sure yep. first down. Yes, that's and that was also as well. another killer for Washington. Look, Michael a lot Penix of drops, Jr. Man. Yeah, a lot of drops and a lot of misconnections. Yeah. And, and look, Michael yep. Penix Jr. hadn't thrown two interceptions in a game. He, he'd only done it once this season, mm -hmm. <laughs> way back early in the season. Yeah. Like this was uncharacteristic of Michael Penix Jr., but why is it uncharacteristic? Because a defense does that. Yeah. Putting the pressure on Penix. So, yes, you heard you heard Barrett Slee say the Joe Moore Award, giving him time. But you want to talk about the relentless effort, BMAC, and the tackling from Michigan? Yeah. My goodness, put yeah. on a clinic. If you want to see and understand what a good defense, great defense looks like, watch how they tackle in open space. Michigan. Mm -hmm. They had some issues a week ago against Alabama, especially the guys in the second, secondary not really tackling. But for the entire season, they've been one of the best tackling defenses in all of college football, and the stats prove that. But one thing I like about Michigan, when you see their blitz concepts, it's not about just showing you where are we going and where are we coming from? They do a great job in manipulating their disguise. So as a quarterback, when you think you see and you know where they're coming from, no, it's the opposite direction. And for the first time in the entire season, guys, we felt like we were watching Michael Penix. Be, he was confused. He didn't know exactly yeah. where to slide the line. Yep. The offensive line, as you mentioned, Barry, the best offensive line in college football, they were confused because of the concepts. When you just show offensive guys where you're going, it's easy for them to pick it up and slide. And what do we see all the time, especially in college football? Quarterbacks see what's going on. The entire offense looks to the sideline to get the actual check to be able to counter based on what they think you're doing. What Michigan does is they show you one thing, but they're coming from a whole nother side of the football field, and oftentimes they're coming through scot-free. We saw so many free hats coming down the teeth of the offense the entire ball game, and we saw Michael Penis for the first time, as I mentioned, a bit rattled. Yeah, he was definitely rattled. And you know what's interesting, BMAC, is yeah, Michigan disguises blitz and where they're coming from, but a lot of times they just give you a blitz look. And I think for Michael Penix, he was definitely confused. He was seeing ghosts because where even if he thought he knew where the blitz was coming from, Michigan wouldn't blitz at all. And he was still rushing the throw. And I think that led to a lot of overthrows in the first half. And, you know, while, while, while Michigan maybe forgot how to run the football in the second quarter, Washington after, had chance after chance after chance to get back in it. But Michael Penix, that Penix never seemed to get settled even when Michigan was only bringing four. So he was definitely seeing ghosts out there. Michigan's defensive game plan was phenomenal because even if they didn't bring pressure, it almost felt like they brought pressure because the offensive line was all over the place and Pennix was seeing ghosts. You want to talk about a disparity rushing the football disparity. <laughs> Uh, 303 <laughs> to 46, BMAC. I have that is not good. Not good at for all. For Washington. And give Deep credit for Dylan Johnson bad. to go out there and, and keep try. toting the rock. Yeah, but he wasn't that, his that, best. that didn't work, man. Yeah, that was, did not work. It was an unfair situation because Dylan Johnson came into the game not healthy and he got banged up while playing the ball game. He tried to We're fight. We're still mad about that. But, but against this <laughs> defense, if you're not 100%, you're playing running back you're not going to have success. And if you go back to our pregame show, we talked about matchups and which side did we favor and why. When you talk about the game in the trenches, remember the one thing I said, Michigan's a 907 team. They practice 907 drills. That's an inside, physical on physical type mindset. And that's something that they practice week in and week out. At halftime, they had 209 yards on the ground, average 12 yards. They finished the ball game with 304 yards, four rushing touchdowns. If you want to win ball games, win the game within the game, that's in the trenches. Michigan did so. Washington had no answer. But I'll say this, though, Barrett, even though Michigan carved them up running the football, in the second half, Washington defense were forced. They were forcing yes. Michigan to punt the football. I mean, Michigan won this ball game, guys, but they were one of nine on third down. So third down opportunities, Washington played their best football. Unfortunately, their offense couldn't get things going. Yeah, it seemed interesting because on the first drive, maybe two drives for Washington, they seemed like they were definitely trying to run the football. They wanted to establish the run, and I think that was so Michael Penix would be more comfortable that Michigan wouldn't pin their ears back. 
and come after the quarterback and it, it just didn't work now Dylan Johnson getting hurt and coming back and leaving and coming back probably uh, disrupted that script a little bit but I mean I think that really changed the entire spectrum of what they were trying to do because after that it was almost like Washington just sort of you know put the put the run to the side and said all right we're, we're just going to try to do what we do and chuck the ball deep even if my Penix has pressure in his face and you look at what that caused two of 14 on third downs for Washington I mean it just was a a disastrous game plan from the jump and it's not because of anything that Washington did going into the game in terms of formulating that game plan it was just how Michigan completely blew it up from the get-go four rushing touchdowns they set the tone with Donovan Edwards a 41 yard touchdown and our own Chip Patterson had uh D Edwards to score the first touchdown at plus 1300 so shouts yeah. to Chip Patterson on that and shouts to Jim Harbaugh because if this is his swan song pretty good way to go out winning the national championship as he defeats Washington 34 to 13 B Mac I'm going to say two words he gone yes <laughs> yes yes our Joe Musso Musso who is a big time Chicago Bears fan he's already you know, asking for the Bears to try to go get Coach Harbaugh to become their next head coach. Heck, they, have, they still have a coach currently, Joe, so I don't know what you're talking about. But, yeah, he, he's gone. Uh, when you th think about the job he's done collegiately, uh, he went out, jump-started this program on the recruiting trail. You remember when he was doing the satellite camps and was b making big headlines because of that? In comes all the big-name recruits. You know, it had some, some issues against Ohio State, but when he found a way to get over that hurdle, against the Buckeyes. Man, good luck. It was hard slowing this train down, uh, making it consistently into the college football playoffs, you know, one and done situations, not winning ball games, and then answering those questions like he did this year. What else is there for him to prove? His name is hot. He will be the most coveted potential NFL coach that would be available if he decides to leave. Michigan and I'm sorry Michigan fans you might not want to hear this but this is the reality he will be the most coveted coach and I'm saying that even if Bill Belichick is a free agent if the Patriots and Robert Kraft says you know what coach coach Belichick enough is enough it's time to go ahead and part ways I think Harbaugh will be a more coveted coach than Bill Belichick yeah Barry what what point would I mean what would what would hold him back I mean you just won the national championship what what purpose what do you need to prove Defending it. I mean, it's harder to sustain success than it is to, 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 to keep get success. I mean, look at Gene Chizik, look at Ed Orgeron. Those are perfect examples. But I, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I, I agree with BMAC. I think Harbaugh is gone. I mean, the Falcons don't have a coach, but the idea of of Jim Harbaugh and Arthur Blank working together does not seem like it would work out so well. But I think, you know, it's weird because Michigan has always sort of accepted this, right? He's flirted with jobs the last couple of years. He's kept his team abreast of what's going on including last year on National Signing Day when he was talking to an NFL team. So I think it's a sort of a different dynamic. And because of that, I think everybody would be okay if this is it, right? Because he's leaving on top. Michigan wins the national championship. He would be leaving Michigan in as healthy of a place as it's been maybe ever, right? So I think in some situations, it would seem sort of like he's abandoning the program. But I think this would be fine for everybody. I think everyone's sort of cool with it. And certainly, Jim Harbaugh, among potential NFL candidates, he's going to have his pick. If he's had the chance to go the last couple of seasons and either didn't like the job or didn't get the job, he's going to get a ton of money thrown at him right now from basically every NFL team that has a vacancy. And he's going to get to pick where he goes. So, yeah, I think this is it. And good for him. You know, like I said, he, he's left the program in a place better place than it's ever been in the past. He's walking out on top, and he still has an NFL dream to chase. He hasn't won a Super Bowl, been to one, but hasn't won one. And think about what that would mean if he's able to win a national championship in college and win a Super Bowl. That would put him as one of the best coaches, regardless of sport, in the history of, of American sports. Yeah, lost to his brother in the Super Bowl, and his brother was on the field in Houston, one of the first to hug him, to congratulate him as a national champ. As Jim Harbaugh delivers the Wolverines their 10th national championship in school history and first since 1997. Brian McFadden, Barrett Salee here on CBS Sports HQ. And look, it, it didn't start out great uh, for Michigan in the college football playoff. Um, they, they, they weren't all that great, really. They were one and six in bowl games under Jim Harbaugh. And then they won both of their CFP games this season as they win the Rose Bowl and they win the Natty 34 to 13. Jim Harbaugh.
leading the Wolverines to the national championship. Coming up, back out to Houston. We're just getting started. The future of Jim Harbaugh. Is he, in fact, leaving Ann Arbor? Will he head back to the NFL? We'll talk to an insider next on CBS Sports HQ.